NASA was on complete lockdown, so they wouldn't, they were absolutely totally uncooperative. And you might even argue that they tried to mislead us on occasion. And so, like Mike did, when I was working with another longtime reporter at the Sentinel, Jim Lustner, and basically our job was we went out to the Cape in Brevard County and knocked on doors every night because no one else would talk, you couldn't talk to you during the day. And got, I can't even tell you how many doors we got slammed in our face. I think the second night after a few, several dozen of these calls, I got some old guy on the phone and said, I'm sorry to bother you, you can hang up on me. All of a sudden he just stopped me and said, well, I'll be happy to talk to you. And it turned out that was the head of uh, quality control for the whole Space Flight Center. Stayed up to five in the morning the next night with him and basically took a course in Rocketry 101 and learned the, uh, the details of what went wrong, and not only that, how NASA engineers think, how they assess risk, and it was quite an education. You know, that was, that, that was just what it was all about, was guys who didn't know anything about NASA, yeah. guys who had never covered NASA, just knocking on doors and doing, you know, basic reporting 101, and that's how we broke stories. I mean, that's how we got stuff. But they waited a, a fair amount of time before actually retrieving the capsule and the bodies. And we knew we got a tip the night that they were going to bring him in. And it, they brought him in at like 12, 30, 1 o'clock in the morning. And I don't know if it was Red or, or maybe Kirk was there to shoot. It. And there was this, of course, was back before there was cell phones or anything like that. Oh. And there was one pay phone on, out on the jetty. When we saw the boat in the distance, Lucifer went to, the, to as far out on the jetty as he could. And I stayed by the phone. And he would yell back what he was seeing. And I was on the phone to the night desk at the Sentinel. And I was calling it all in. Yeah. And other reporters were coming up trying to grab that phone, and I'm just looking, I'm saying, sorry, son, you're not calling this one in on us because we've got the phone and we're not giving it up. And you would get the paper in the morning, and there would be your story on the front page, and, and you'd feel real happy about that. Then the phone would ring, and it was the city editor, Mike Bales, and he said, okay, now what's for tomorrow? <laughs> and, and so it was, you know, it was just sort of unrelenting seven days a week for six months. The thing I remember most about that is just spending all this time, you know, away from home. I, you know, my wife is pregnant, and you know, I'm, I'm with Loosner on the road the whole time, and talking to all these strange people, you know, that who won't come out and talk to you except at night. And like Mike said, it was it was it was as intense a reporting experience I think as I ever I ever had to this day. It's just something about that first um, disaster. I think mm -hmm. it, it was such a huge story in our backyard that we had never seen before. Kind of lost your innocence, you know. Yeah, it, it was. It was just like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, look what's happened here. You know, what went wrong, and we found out what went wrong.